Today I'm going to show you the Pentax K7. This was released in 2009 as the successor to the K20D. It made the body smaller. They also improved the frames per second, uh, added video mode, live view. Overall it was definitely an improvement, mostly incremental. Some things such as the sensor from Samsung were the same sensor but more readout lines or something actually decreased the sensitivity of the sensor slightly so there's a little bit more noise involved with the K7 compared to the K20D but like I said overall this was a pretty large improvement to the K20D. It's uh, 5.2 frames per second. Um, it is from 2009. They've made improvements since then but it's got video mode 720p and also a 1080p but it's not actually 1080p it's slightly lower resolution. Um, I'll have that actual specific size in my article included in this video, but it is slightly higher resolution than 720p. And those are at 30 frames a second. The camera itself, usability wise, is really great. This is probably my favorite, except, I mean excluding the new K5, this is my favorite Pentax DSLR just from a usability standpoint. It's really compact yet it's a semi-professional body. You've got the magnesium alloy casing. The back is actually polycarbonate plastic but you've got the magnesium alloy and then on a steel frame it's really solid. Weather seals. The button layout is great for the most part. Up here you've got the shutter release on off like standard You've got the exposure compensation button. You hold that down, use the back scroll wheel or the green button. You've got the green button here, scroll wheel number two. Number one's up front by the shutter. It's really great positioning for your one hand to control various aspects of the camera. You've got the AEL button, auto exposure lock. That's really handy in, of course, still photos, but also in video. So you lock down the exposure in video. Uh, this camera does not have full manual control in video, but you can use exposure compensation as well as the A auto exposure lock to lock down that exposure so you don't get like a pulsing effect in your videos. But as, as I was saying, you've got two buttons up here. The other one is ISO. You also hold that down and use the back scroll wheel to change. It's really easy. On the back here, we've got the standard preview image button and a trash button. This dial here changes what mode you are in with autofocus. You can either, either use the center point, selectable point, or have the camera control which area to focus on. And then you've got the standard directional buttons but each one also specifies like white balance, timer. Down here you've got info and menu, it's pretty standard stuff here. Autofocus button. But overall the usability, where they put the controls, the actual physical size of the camera was what really got me interested in this one. The K20D and the K10D just didn't feel right to me. They were too big, too bulky for an APS-C camera. The K7 is one of the smallest out there with a semi-professional build quality and features. Back to controls, on the side here you've got, you've got a RAW button so you can switch between RAW, RAW plus JPEG or JPEG. And then you also have a dial to control the type of focus, manual focus, uh, continuous and standard autofocus. You've got the main dial, different modes, user mode, X-Sync, Bulb, Manual, TAV, AV, TV, SV, and P with the green option. That only shoots JPEG, I never use the full green mode, or whatever it's called, auto, I don't know what they really call it. And then the video control, and then right under there there's a the little toggle switch for the metering. This camera has 77 segment metering. I've always found it to be really strong and so overall really solid build, nice in the hand, easy to use. Um, all the 
ports are covered in rubber. Another nice feature of this camera it has a mic input so you can have an external microphone in video. Really nice. Of course it uses SD cards. It can be a little challenging to, challenging to use so it's pretty easy to stick in there. Just push it down, it locks in. Now if you have pretty small fingers you can easily pull it out. I think it, sometimes it gets stuck on this notch here that is the lock button. So the best way to do it, open it up and then let the thing fly out a bit. It's pretty easy to take out. But if you hold it down as you're pushing it out, it kind of gets locked in there a little bit. It's more difficult. So like I said, let it pop out by itself. It's easier to pull out. Uh, this camera is, of course, new enough that it has the SDM. So all the SDM lenses, the DA stars, work just fine with this camera. It has a pretty fast autofocus system. It was definitely an upgrade to the K20D. Um, I have a standard 18-55 lens here. This is standard kit lens, APS-C only. See kind of a size comparison with the K7 and the standard lens. So it's a nice, pretty perfect size for this camera. Good grip. So when I first saw this camera in a local camera shop, it had a grip on it. Here's the grip that you can buy optionally. This is pretty important for this camera. This is a great, it's a small camera, but of course it's semi-pro. It's got all those features, but it's small. You can put a 40 millimeter on here and you've got a nice tiny camera but if you want something more substantial you've got a large flash on it um, sometimes down here with your hand you know the camera's not very tall so it would be a little awkward you've got a lot of weight on the top so what you can do is buy the optional grip it's really nice it comes with a little plastic thing to cover these contacts you just slide it in this slot here locks into place and on the bottom of the camera it's got a rubber gasket you just pull that out those are where the contacts go you just also put this in the grip it stays in place and then you lock it down with the tripod mount so as I was saying I went to the camera shop and they had the grip on the camera and the guy said, oh, well, I could take that grip off. But I was like, no, I want to try it with the grip and see how it is. It's really amazing with the grip. It's got great feel to it. Adds that extra bit of support on the bottom of your hand. You can easily, it's, a lot, it's actually easier to use one-handed with the grip than without. You can hold the camera vertically. It has buttons on here. It's got the full shutter button with the ISO and exposure compensation. You know, full, full control here. And on the back, it's also got the same thing with the scroll wheel, AEL, green button, AF button. It's pretty great. I'd say if you're getting a K7, try to get the grip too. There, there are some aftermarket ones that are not Pentax. They don't have weather sealing, but they're really cheap and basically do the same thing. And this is a full weather sealed one. Inside, you can see a little gasket. Um, I, I, I assume there's some gasketing inside too, but you can use standard battery here. And then also, you can slide a SD card inside. So you've got two batteries, two SD cards in your setup. It's pretty nice. So it also comes with standard AA battery tray. You know, great in the field if your uh, rechargeables are fully uncharged. You can buy some d double A's, I think six of them. 
and go from there with that. It's pretty good. So, like I said, I was at the camera shop, tried it with the grip, and I was like, oh, I gotta have this camera. So, eventually I found a pretty good deal on it and got the K7. It's got a lot of shutter releases on it. It's still going strong. Another nice thing about the K7 is the shutter sound is really quiet compared to a lot of DSLRs out there, especially the, the cheaper ones, but... Really nice sound to it. It's muted. It's not too... I mean, that always is different depending on your lens. If you have a really substantial lens, you'll hear, hear less shutter sound, but overall, it's got a really nice sound to it. I could speed that up a little bit. So this is at one eight thousandth of a second. When you hear the shutter, and turn off the autofocus. Sounds really good. Yeah, of course, this camera's been around for quite a while, so it's got a lot of actuation. It still sounds good. High speed shooting, continuous. It's in manual focus. It's pretty fast. I probably mentioned 5.2 frames a second, uh, 14 megapixels, you know, not too bad for APS-C. There are some negatives of the K7, uses that Samsung 14.6 megapixel sensor, uh, but the problem is, well at least back in 2009 it wasn't really a problem, but these days the high ISO capabilities of this sensor are pretty low. It also has kind of below average dynamic range. The one positive, at least I think, with the Samsung sensor is that it has a more of a film look to it. I don't know how to describe it, but the ISO goes from 6400 ISO down to 100 ISO. There is also two settings, one for shadows and one for overexposure highlight correction that changes your minimum ISO to 200 it does help in some situations you can experiment with that setting the viewfinder is a pentaprism type viewfinder with 100 percent coverage at 92 X magnification overall it's good for this grade of camera the semi pro I'd like to see a larger viewfinder in APS-C, but there really isn't much out there that, or much they can do, I guess you could say. Here's a little bit of a close-up of the K7. We'll just talk about a few features here. Over on the side here, I mentioned autofocus control. It's a little difficult to select. They've changed that on the K5. It's a little longer, that button. That is PC Sync port for flash. The flash button pops up the flash. Just push it down. And of course, with the dial here, they made this slightly larger on the K5. It's got some bridging on it for easier movement. Just press the button down on the top and rotate it. And then ports. LCD 3 inch, I believe it's like 920,000 pixels. And the control button's back here. Live view button is kind of a challenge. To, it's easy to press on accident. Overall, pretty decent control layout. Green button, that's helpful. Okay, grip area. Camera's held up well overall the, the use that I've gotten out of it. So here's some high detail close-ups of the Pentax K7 lens contacts on the bottom here. Feeds all of the information back and forth to the lens. Also the SDM contacts up here. This is the metal mount. You can see a little scuffing on the bottom here. That's where some of the weather-resistant lenses have rubber. 
on the side here that is the autofocus for screw type lenses autofocus knob Let's see HDMI PCAV and the power connector that's optional you got the autofocus button right there in the center helpful with some situations like in pre-focusing video and the autofocus type it says auto SEL and center point for the type of autofocus the LV for live view we go down standard menu controls with the white balance timer and all that down there is the area for shutter release wired so you can do that with it's good with astrophotography and similar things where you want to keep the camera as still as possible use an external shutter release nice rubberized grip material and that is good for the timer and stuff it flashes and the mirror and check that out I'm going to turn the camera on. Sensor cleaning mirror up. Sensor itself with shake reduction moves around inside the camera. So all of your lenses will have shake reduction. If the lens is completely manual, the camera gives you an option to input the focal length before you start, so that's helpful with the calculations, I assume.